Hi guys, this will be, I think, my first English spoken video of the channel. My name is Jules, and the name Canal Spadanal is really my Portuguese middle name, and why, as a joke, uh, a long time ago, I've changed Spadanal Rems to Spaniard Rames, and it stuck. So that's my artistic name now, I guess. I sometimes make animation shorts in this channel, and plenty more are scheduled to this year but that's another topic i'm going to tell a little story about this decision of having some english spoken videos on the canal Spadanel, on the portuguese channel i have this other channel from 2007 i believe and i don't really know why probably for the lack of due to the lack of activity the channel is dead uh, very few views it doesn't even um get clicks anymore I don't think it's due to anything else than being old and having a bunch of old videos there. And some college videos back there were made with copyrighted music and YouTube uh, in the early 2000s or in the middle 2000s was like the old west for that kind of stuff. So for now I will use the Portuguese channel for some English videos as well and will tag PT or Ang in the title. The word artist is a weird thing to me. Uh, I'm more of a curious guy, I can't bear to be stuck doing the same kind of thing for too long, at least when, when it involves a bigger project. But I always loved medieval fantasy and comics, that, that was uh, a, a main focus. My inspirations were from all across the world. Um, I, I just loved the, the, the paintings and the drawings of Frank Frazetta and the, the type of uh, art that Todd McFarlane does. And, but curiously from Japan, the ones who touched me back then were probably Akira Toriyama uh, from Dragon Ball, Masamune Shiro from Ghost in the Shell, and of course that legend that uh, was um, Katsuhiro Otomo, the Japanese Walt Disney as many people call him. I never knew the works of Kentaro Miura back then. I think Berserk, due to its more adult and dark approach, never came to Portugal in my early teens. But, but because I'm one of those guys who prefers to draw in public. I was approached countless times over the years about uh, his work, about many people would just look at what, what I was drawing and cite Berserk. They would say, hey man, well, you should check out Berserk, you have that Miura vibe going on. And that's how I came to know and be curious about who was this artist, this mangaka, Kentaro Miura. You see, I have this huge project, a project with 400 years of uh, backstory, of lore, and so I guess it's more like this saga. And the project is called Arcadian Devils. It evolved into a huge beast hanging over my back and the more it grew, the more I was scared of making it a reality. The thing is that this type of passion projects will never leave you alone. They are like needy and clingy coming to the forefront, sometimes wrapped in your other words. So I had this Arcadian Devils ghost for more than 20 years following me around, getting bigger and bigger. And the damn thing was living just brand free in my head. I've I tried to make it a reality in animation form uh, and did a short animatic for the first chapter for that. And as you might imagine, animation is hard. I was doing the temporary voiceovers and stuff like that just to get the feeling of the scene. Uh, but without a solid structure of collaborators, voice artists, other CG artists, things that involve a lot of money, I would never achieve this goal in my lifetime. So it went back to the drawer. Where are the founders? Won't ask you again. <laughs> you are late. At the same time, I was following Miura's work on Berserk and he was now taking longer breaks due to his health. And it started to concern me and the rest of the Berserk fans from all across the world. And I don't even blame the, the Idol Master game he was, he was playing back then. Miura deserved it. He was a true perfectionist. Thus, that in many ways leads to extensive burnouts of the body and of the mind. You have drawing sessions that take 10 hours.
hours of your day sometimes or more and in Miura style you might get this set piece this giant uh, this giant environment that takes a whole week just to draw just to render in ink in the most minute detail and uh, so heavy burnout from overworking is kind of like you have this sleek well-oiled machine and you push it to the limit constantly and that machine will start to wear really fast and even it even if it's a brand new machine even if it's well oiled it will eventually show some wear and tear and i felt it in in my work and i'm not even at Muir's level and I will never be. But what I will be is more consistent with this Arcadian Devils thing. Last year around Christmas or something, I've decided that I wanted something that would marry my two biggest inspirations, manga and comics. And that should be the end goal. I even call it Komiga, which is cringe, I know. And I dusted off my Arcadian Devils encyclopedia and divided it into uh, comic chapters. It was humongous. There were five big R arcs, each one with five interior mini arcs. Each one of these chapters is like a tiny part of a colossal staircase, but hey, at least I'm a step closer to its conclusion, right? Now, thanks to two of my buddies, Louise, who is now uh, who is a cool cat that helped me during this process, and Fabio, who lent me some of his time and skills to b help me build this website. This website where inside I could use it as my own personal publishing house and uh, or has a public archive for the comic. So the first chapter come, came out, did another animation for this channel, and while I was inking this, the second chapter, that's when it happened. Kentaro Miura tragically passed away, and it hit me like a ton of brick. Of course, I was sad to his family and friends, and although I didn't knew the guy, I knew a fraction of his vision and of his dreams, which was berserk, and that thing touched me profoundly. You know, there's this place in our lives where everything seems eternal so we procrastinate as long as we can until we get to that point of no return where you either do it or you give up entirely and this impetus to continue this story of mine was somehow pushed by Mura's own departure which is tragic it's like being pinched by someone who past the point of no return decided to achieve his vision and still he, he didn't make it. But he was 20 something when Berserk started to come out and sadly his work will never be concluded now. Even if his apprentices continue the story forward, even if the man left them a handful of notes on how it all ends, I start to get weird flashbacks towards that that last Game of Thrones season and how, how hard it is to finish a story just using vague notes and closing arcs. Will this be? That's my question now and I think main, many of you have the same one. Will this be the full berserk experience? And I don't know. And here I was at the beginning of this Arcadian Devil's Road looking at this comic in front of me when it all happens, when the news came out. And that's why I've stopped what I was doing for the day and decided to draw that Guts uh, video that you probably seen in the channel. Uh, and and make it my personal silent tribute because there was there wasn't much to say, just sad. But chapter 2 of the comic will have a lot of, of Miura hanging around, so I will dedicate it to, to, to the guy. I felt his haunting presence throughout the whole damn thing, from page 5 till the end. And I believe some stories in your head have that power to haunt and disturb you as a creator. They want to be born, and they will eventually come out. Some will even claw their way out. As for what we got from Kentaro Miura, even if we never get to see the end of the road, we were blessed by having what we got, and somehow, in my headcanon, Guts will be like this lonesome cowboy riding to the sunset. Thank you, Legend, and thank you guys for, for listening, honestly.